Well, if you guys haven't noticed, you're stuck with me today. <laughs> which, which God was kind of dealing with me this morning that I shouldn't have that attitude. So, so I'm sorry. You're blessed to have a message for me today. <laughs> All right. Well, the title of my message today is God's Heart. Does your heart look like His? So, um, and, and it's a simple message, but but it's just something God had laid on my heart, and I, I just felt like I, I should share it. And um, <clears throat> so I'm going to first start off talking about God's love. And we all know God loves us, right? Right? Yeah. But, but has that really settled deep inside your soul, like how much God loves you? I mean, it's kind of hard to wrap your mind around. But it's hard for me. You know, I mean, He loves us unconditionally no matter what, but... But sometimes it's hard to let that sink in and, and settle deep inside of you. And God is absolutely crazy for us. And, and He loves us so much that, that He sent His Son to die for us, right? Right. So that's a whole lot of love right there. I mean, would, would any of you guys send your son to go die for somebody that... No. Um, and, uh, um, and God did this just so... That, that we could be with him and we could spend an eternity with him. And in John chapter 3, verse 16, which is a, a verse that we all know very well, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that who that whosoever believe in, believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And I also want to read to you um, out of Romans verse 5, ch I'm sorry, chapter 5, verse 8. It says, but God commandeth his love toward us in that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. So even while we were sinners, we were full of, of, of sin and darkness, God still loved us and still sent his son to die for us. He loved us that much. And, I, and I'm, I'm telling you, I'm going to write a book one day. Everybody, I'm just going to let you know now. I relate God's love to us to parenting. <laughs> and... And I never understood that until I became a mother, and and um, and so I, I always relate things, you know, like that. But but you know, we love our children, right? We want the best for our children, even when they're they're bad, and and you know, and they're trying our patience. I'll tell you, Hunter did that yesterday, man. That boy, <laughs> he is just lucky he's here today. <laughs> he, he pushed me beyond the brink. But but we do that with God too, right? Right? You know, we. We do that. We we um, disobey and run amok, and God says, "Don't do that." We're still off doing whatever He says not to do, and uh, and even when we think things should work out the way we think they should, and they don't, then we throw a fit, and we're you know, you know, I, I kind of wonder if God like sees us down here, you know, throwing one of them four alarm fits, you know, that like toddlers can do. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, so yeah, but God still loves us through that, and he still sees us through that, and, and he still sees what what we are to become, and, and he doesn't see us right as we're acting in the hot mess and all that. He He still sees where we're going, and um, and he loves us in, in, unconditionally with all the imperfections, and, and um, like I said, sometimes the hot mess that we can be, and absolutely nothing can change God's love for us. Nothing. There's there's nothing on this earth that that can change His love for us. So let's go to Romans chapter eight, verses thirty-seven and thirty-nine. Everybody there. And it says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, or any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So absolutely nothing, nothing can separate us from God's love. It is unconditional. There's... There's nothing that we have done to deserve it, and there's nothing that we've done to lose it. Now, don't misquote me or mistake me here. Something can separate us from God, which is us. You know, the only one that moves in that whole relationship is us. And 
if God is a is a is a just and and um, uh, and loving God, and you know the Bible says that if we do not confess with our mouth and ask forgiveness of sins, then we won't see heaven. So you know that even though God is is a loving God, and and, and even though there's absolutely nothing that can separate us from His love. You know, we we still need to confess our sins and to ask forgiveness and accept Him as as uh, as Lord, and then we will spend eternity with Him. So the, that is the only thing that can separate us separate us from God. And um, and that verse for that is verse or is First John one nine, and it says, "If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness." So. Uh, getting to the, the heart of my, my uh, sermon today, um, my question is, does your heart look like God's? Do you love unconditionally? Do you uh, love others even though they're being all mean and nasty and, and hateful and a hot mess? Do you still love them through it? So does your heart look like God's? Um, and, and, you know, does your heart break when for the same things that God's heart breaks for. And another question I want to ask you is, do you love God the way he loves you, unconditionally, no matter what? Or is it a one-sided relationship? I, uh, I have three examples of, of men in the Bible who, who had God's heart and they chased after God. And the first one is Enoch. How many are familiar with Enoch? If you go to Genesis chapter 5, verses 22 through 24, and it says, starting verse 22, it says, And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 365 years, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Now, that last verse is kind of where I want to concentrate on. Uh, Enoch walked with God. He he walked with him. He talked with him every single day. He was, they were very close, and God loved him so much. He just said, you know, you're you're my buddy. You know, we're dealing. With, I, I love you so much. Why don't you just come on up into heaven with me? And so he took him up. He didn't die. He didn't. God just took him up. How cool is that? You know, and, and he he did. He had God's heart. He he walked with him. He talked with him, and you know, and just just had that relationship with him which is pretty cool. Um, and God thought so too, because he said, come on up and spend an eternity with me. Uh, another example is David. And, and David <clears throat> is labeled a man after God's own heart. And if you, uh, let's turn to Acts chapter 13. And we're going to start in verse 22. Everybody there? Okay. And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, whom also he gave testimony, and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. And in verse 23, it says, Of this man's seed hath God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior, Jesus. So Jesus came from the lineage of David. And David was, was a man after God's own heart. And what, what I find really neat about this and what really speaks to me, David wasn't perfect. David had, you know, he had some hiccups along the way. You know, and, and I, I don't know if you all remember the story about Bath, uh, Bathsheba, yeah. Bathsheba and Uriah. Uriah was, was her husband. And David, um, um, I think he was up on the roof of his palace and just happened to look over and Bathsheba was was taking a bath and kind of know how that goes and caught David's eye and and um, so he called her to the palace and and um, long story short she ended up uh, getting pregnant and you know here's David King and you know a man of God and uh oh <laughs> can't let this out and so he uh, her husband Uriah was fighting he was off fighting and so David um, had called the, the commanders of the army or the commander of the army and since 
um, send Uriah to the, the front of the lines and so that way he would die and then nobody would find out his sin. But God found it out. And um, as we all know, the child that Bathsheba had ended up passing away and God told him that's what was going to happen. And, you know, and, and David prayed and fasted and, you know, to try to change God's mind. But when it did, David said, you know, all right, I sinned, but, you know, and got up and repented. Well, he repented way before then, but but he got up <clears throat> and he got his eyes back on Jesus, on, on God. And he, and he got up and he got going again. And um, so, you know, David did mess up, but he still had God's heart. He still chased after God. He still, um, you know, he knew where he missed it. And he was very quick to repent and, and turn and, and get things going back again. And that, that that's pretty cool that, you know, even when we do mess up, we're never too far gone. God loves us so much that, that he still wants us to prosper and still wants and still can use us. And so as I um, as I was studying this, I'm like, well, what what qualities did David have? What what qualities do we need to be uh, someone after God's God's heart? And um, and I'm gonna list these qualities to you. And, and if you want the addresses to where these are at, I can get you after service. We're not gonna turn to all of them. But but David was humble. David was reverent. He was respectful. He was trusting. He was loving. He was devoted. He devoted his whole life and his whole family, everything to God. Um, he uh, had he gave recognition. He was faithful. He was obedient. That's a big one. And he was repentant. And that's <coughs> that's another one. And <coughs> going back with David and Saul, um, before David became king, you know, Saul went to kill him. And he had many opportunities where, where he could have, have killed Saul, but but he in, in, in his army, you know, his, his armor bears all of them, like, here, here's your chance, kill him, kill him. And he said no, because, you know, Saul is God's anointed and, and that's not my call, you know. So so he was he was very obedient to God. And so, um, and then, uh, <clears throat> uh, like I said, David did mess up. But if you turn to 1 Kings chapter 15, verse 5, it says, Because David did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and turned not aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, save only the matter of Uriah the Hittite. So, so David, um, he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. He tried his very best. He tried his very best to hit the mark like Pastor Brian talks about. And, and um, he, he did everything <coughs> the Lord commanded him to do. And, and because he did that, God blessed David, he blessed his household, he blessed his children, and how many of you know that King Solomon was was Dave's or Dave, <laughs> David's son, <laughs> and and Solomon was very wise and, and and rich and just very blessed, and and God had said as long as you do what is right in my eyes, your your uh, your children and your children's children will be blessed, and so as as we've learned through this. Through David's lineage, who who came from David's lineage? Jesus, right? So that's our third example. And um, in John chapter ten, verse fifteen, it says, "As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep." And I want to go on to to Matthew three, verses sixteen through seventeen. It says, "And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water." And lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So, Jesus had God's heart too. You know, Jesus, you know, he's he's our perfect example. You know, that's that's one who we're supposed to be modeling our lives after. But but he, you know, if it wasn't the will of the Father, he didn't do it. You know, he completely had had God's heart, and and his and God's heart were as one. And Second Peter chapter one verses seventeen and eighteen says, "For he received from God the Father honor and glory, when there came such a voice from him, the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And this voice, which come from heaven, we heard. 
when we were with him in that holy mount. And so again, that was just another reference to when Jesus was baptized and, and they heard God's voice coming down from heaven, that this is my son and, and whom I am well pleased. And, you know, and God looks at us too when we get God's heart and when we, we line our lives up with the word and, and we, um, you know, do the, the things that we should. He's very pleased with us. He's very proud of us. And he loves us just as much. He's no respecter of persons. He doesn't love Rachel more than he loves Kenny. He doesn't love Keith more than he does Sister Joyce. He loves us all the same. And, you know, and, and, and again, going back to being parents, you know, we love our children all the same. I don't love Reese more than I do Hunter. You know, I, we love them all the same. And we want the best for them. We want them to succeed. And we want to, to give them the tools to succeed you know, and, and to, um, to have a blessed life. And God wants the same for us. And, um, and, and that doesn't mean that, that, you know, sometimes we get disciplined. You know, if we mess up, you know, we, we get disciplined. If my kids mess up, they get disciplined. It's not fun, but hopefully they learn from it and then don't repeat the same mistake again. And that's the same way with us and, and, and with God. And, and, you know, the Bible says God chastises those that, that he loves. So, um, so as, you know, we can also have God's heart too, right? Definitely. And, and we should want God's heart. And, um, and as we get God's heart, then our, our hearts start to beat as one with God's. And um, when, we, when we turn our lives over and we, when we repent, we make Jesus the Lord of our lives, we get that blood transfusion. You know, the old man's passed away and the new man is alive, you know, and, and like the Becky that I was 10, 15 years ago is not the Becky that I am now, thank God, <laughs> but uh, I, I always laugh, and probably, Rachel's probably the only one here that remembers this, but when I first started coming to Broken Chains Church, I wasn't how I am now, and I'm still not there at all, don't don't get me wrong, but I was a hot mess, and I was, <laughs> I, I was a problem child. <laughs> I, I put Pastor Ryan, Pastor Tammy through a lot of stuff, and, and you know, and, but I'm not that person anymore, thank God. <laughs> but, but you know, that that old person is is died, that, you know, and, and and that's for every one of us. When when we lay our lives down and when we, when we repent and when we turn, we become new, and and we get that new bloodline, and we get a new heart. You know, that that old heart is is gone, and we get a new one. So turn to Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 27 through, I'm sorry, 26 through 27. When you're there, let me know. Sorry. Got my glasses and I still can't see. Thirty-six. Verse twenty-six. Sorry. Okay. Are we ready? A new heart also I will give you, and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statues. And ye shall keep my judgments and do them. So right there, God's telling us that that He will take out that old hard, stony heart, the heart full of sin, and give us a heart of flesh, a heart that can be molded, a heart that can 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 beat as one with Him. And so we become a complete new creation, a complete new person. And that's just that's that's amazing. That's phenomenal. And that's you know something to rejoice in. And um, let's uh, let's go to Ephesians chapter two. I got a lot of work for you guys today. That's not a bad thing, right? And we're going to start in verse ten, and then after that, we're going to go down to verse eighteen. And in verse ten, it says. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. 
So right here, we are God's workmanship. We are created. And once you know we get that new bloodline, we're created just like Christ. We're created just like Him. And we get that, that, new, uh, that new spirit and that new bloodline. And then go on down to verse 18. Verse 18. And it says, For through him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints in the household of God. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye are also builded together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. So once we once we uh, turn our eyes over and once we're saved, we're in that bloodline. We're in that family. We're we are completely in in, in God's family, and you know we are. And Jesus is King, and God is King, and we are princesses and, and princes in God's kingdom, and which is. Very cool. Makes me very, very excited, you know. And I was, um, I was, I'd heard a song on the way to church this morning, and I was singing it. And I almost felt like I had church before I got to church, and 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 I got the words of the song was, "I'm I'm no longer a slave to fear because I am a child of God," and you know, and I just felt something rise up in me, just just got me just really excited and just really. And, you know, so I'm singing, I'm praising, and Reese is just kind of looking at me. And so the song got done, and I looked at her, and I said, Now, when you get afraid, or when the devil tries to tell you, you know, that, that you know, whatever's scary, I'm like, you tell him you're a child of God. You don't need to be afraid, you know. You you are a child of God, of the most high God. And I, so she's still kind of looking at me, you know, and I'm like, if that doesn't get you excited, you need to check your heart. <laughs> you know, she's just like, <laughs> but, but that just like gets me excited that we, we are a child of God, and He loves us so much. And I, I don't I, I know I'm not explaining how much that, that, I'm not getting across how much that excites me, but, but we are, we are a child of the Most High God, you know, the, nothing, nothing. Can, can come against us that, that God can't take care of. You, you know, and it says in the Bible that if, if God be for us, who can be against us? And, and that's all because He loves us. He's, he's proud of us, and, and, and he, we are His creation. When, when you create something, you're proud of it. You're excited. You love it. You want to protect it. And, and you know, and so as, as, you know, we do that and we catch God's heart, then, then you know, we can, we can have that heart for others. And um, and then then our hearts, you know, as we our hearts start beating with God's, then we start to to rejoice over things that, that He rejoices over. When you, I, I know when we go out on the, the streets and when we minister and, and even in the nursing home, when when somebody gives their heart to God and you know they truly mean it, you get excited. You get, you know, you're. The joy starts building up, and we talk about it for hours after. Like, did you see so and so? That's so exciting! And and, and the Bible says ten thousand angels rejoice, and they, you know, they they sing in heaven when one soul repents and turns and turns to God. And and, and we can get that heart, and we can get excited about that. Is and that is that it's so exciting, and it's not because maybe one of us happened to be the one to help them through the prayer, but but it's you know that their lives. Are going to be changed that they mean it and that you know and, and that they become a child of God and, and and that just so then your heart starts to get excited and it starts when you see somebody walk through their first big um, battle of, uh, of faith where their faith has really got tried and then come out victorious you get excited you know and you you know so so that's when you're getting God's heart when you get ex you know you're getting excited over things that he gets excited over and um, um, and then, you know, on the flip side of that, our hearts break when his heart breaks. You know, when you see your 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 fellow brothers and sisters and, and they stumble or whatever, I mean, your heart breaks because you want the best for them. You want them to be victorious and to overcome. And then your heart starts breaking. And, and you know, and even when you see people that, that don't know the Lord and that you know that if they don't, 
know him and get things worked out with him, you know, they're, they're, they'll, they'll spend eternity in hell, and that breaks your heart. It, it completely breaks your heart. And um, and even when, this is kind of a bunny trail, but even when, like, you know, we've had a lot of celebrities that have passed away, you know, and, and I don't follow all that stuff, but, but your heart breaks because, you know, you know they weren't where they were supposed to be. You know, especially when, when things have got so bad that they ended their own lives. And your heart breaks because it's like, you know, it's definitely not better now, you know. And, and so it, it just, and that breaks God's heart too. And he's right there saying, I'm here, I'll, I'll help you. You just got to reach out and you trust me. And, and, and you want to, you know, do that, like shake that person and say, come on, come on, don't you know if you just trust him and you just walk it out, it'll be so much better. And, and so your heart starts to break, just, just like God's does. And, and, then, and then we start showing compassion to others. And, and we, you know, we start, um, even when you know, they're being mean to you or saying awful things or whatever, you still have compassion on them. And, um, and, and even when you think they don't deserve it. If you go to uh, John... Chapter 13, verses 34 through 35. Let's go ahead and turn there real quick. Okay. And it says, A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you in that ye also love one another. And this shall all men know that ye are my disciples and that, ye, and that ye love one another. So we are to love one another no matter what, no matter what they do, no matter what they say. And, you know, God loves us no matter what we say, no matter what we do. So how much more should we convey that to others? And, you know, that's, that's a hard one to kind of, to kind of walk in, and, and I've noticed as I've grown in the Lord, you know, it becomes a little bit easier, not perfected it by any means whatsoever. <laughs> Still get mad at the McDonald's drive through and <laughs> I do a lot of praying through there, <laughs> and uh, um, you know, but but then as you as you grow, um, you know, God shows you, you know, kind of why they're they're acting the way they're acting, kind of what. You know why they're doing what they're doing, and the Bible says that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. So it's not Shauna <laughs> being all mean and hateful, but it's it's you know it's it's the spirit that that's that would get in her and work through. There's no spirit on her. There's there's a spirit that would get in her and work through her, and and that's where we do our battlegrounds. That's where we do our fighting. We don't fight physically. Thank God. But we, because I think she could take me, we don't, uh, <laughs> but we, we do it through, through you know, love, and we do it through prayer, and, you know, and, and things like that. That's how we do our fighting, and, and that's how we deal with those things, and we show them God's love. And you, you ever heard, um, nobody cares what you have to say and, and until they know that you care? And that is so true, you know, they, until the, and that, that's, Again, use them when we go out on the streets. You know, these guys, there's there's a lot of people that come up to them and, you know, and, and um, you know, say they care and, you know, but they're, they're not always, they're not always there. And, and we've, we've made many of bonding relationships and because they know we do care. You know, they know that we, <laughs> there's one right there. <laughs> we love you, Keith. But, but they know that, that we do care. And, you know, we're, we're there no matter what. We're out in the rain with them. We're out in the snowstorms with them. We're, we're, Sean and Heather are out there in the ice storms with them. <laughs> Sliding on that. <laughs> but, but, you know, it, 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 there's never a reason why we don't go other than unless we got something going on in church. But they, that speaks to them. They know that we care. And then that puts them in a spot where they can receive Jesus and they, they can receive what we're, what, we're, what we're talking about. And the same with, and that's, that's just not, that's the same with everybody, not, not just, just people that, that you meet, you know, outside. I mean, it's people at work. It's, it's, you know, your family and all that. They, you know, 
actions speak way louder than words. You know, they, they, they want to know that, that you care. And, and the same thing, you know, with God. God loves us no matter what. And so we should we should show that to others. And um, um, let, let's turn to Matthew chapter 5. We're starting verse 44. And it says, But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which dis despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he marketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain to the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. So if we're, you know, if, if we're, if we love and, and we are we are loving to those that, that we're friends with and that, that, you know, we don't like us back, what good is that? Is that, is that showing Jesus to the world? You know, and, and if, if, um, you know, Rachel and I, whatever, if we're, you know, not friends, and, and if I don't show her Jesus, and if I don't show her love, what good is that doing to her? You know, so so we are to love our enemies. We are to bless them, and I pray God bless them. But, <laughs> but sincerely, 100% mean, bless them. You know, it, if you guys heard like the... The, the real nice southern way of telling somebody off is, bless your heart. <laughs> and they don't mean that. <laughs> but, but, you know, but, but no, we really want them to be blessed. And you really should want them to be blessed. And, and that's having God's heart. That is even those that, that persecute you and, and those that are, that are mean to you. You guys heard the story about Pastor Brian and the, and the guy at the, I don't know, one of the places he worked at, the um, where the guy kept dropping hot iron on him, or not iron, but like the, I'm butchering this really bad, but he just he just really made his life every day at work awful. And, you know, Pastor Brian walked in love with him, walked in love with him, and, and, and it got to where he, like, couldn't handle it anymore. And, and you know, and he told God, he's like, God, you're going to have to do something because <laughs> we're... I mean, you know, which which Pastor Brian will tell you that wasn't the right heart. He should have just kept continuing and continuing and continuing. But but he did. He continued to, to show love to this guy, and he never got mad, never got in a fight with him, never told him off, never said you do that one more time. That's gonna. Be, he never did that. He just kept walking in love with him. And then later one night, real late in the morning, the guy had called Pastor Brian, and he said, you know. I, I've done awful things to you. I've done it on purpose. And, you know, I, I'm i running from God, and I want to get right. And, I, you know, he said, you never you never did me wrong. You never, you just completely walked in love with me. And the Word says that love covers a multitude of sin. So, you know, so you just you just keep going. Just just keep praying. Just keep praying for them. Again, it's not that person. We that we wrestle with. It's it's the principalities and the powers. So just keep, you know, I would encourage you, just keep walking in love. Just keep God's God's heart and keep your, your heart with His. And, and you know, it'll pay off. You know, it'll, it'll, um, it, it'll change someone. You know, which, which is great. That just speaks, speaks a lot to me. And then as, then our focus as we get God's heart, our focus changes on what God focuses on. We kind of worry just a little bit less about ourselves, and we, we focus on what, what God focuses on. What, what's important to Him is important to us. And by doing that, then what's important to us is important to Him. See how that big old circle that goes there? <laughs> and uh, um, 
Romans 8, 6 says, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And then I want to uh, share with you too, Romans 15, 6 says, That ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And, you know, as we do that, as, as we um, get God's heart and we get in that one mind, we start to focus in on, on what God focuses on. And, and this I'm kind of referring to as a church here, you know, as, as a church body. Then there's unity. And then when there's unity in the church, then God commands the blessing. And, and you know, as we get unity in the church and, and we get as one, absolutely nothing can stop us. Nothing. And, you know, and so as everybody gets focused on there, you become unstoppable. And, and you know, and then you get, you know, even Jesus in, in um, Matthew chapter 14. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, Matthew chapter 20. And Jesus said that, that he came to serve and not be served. And that's, that's what the church should do. The church should serve. So as you get God's heart, you want to serve. You want to serve your community. You want to do all that, and, and just what what matters to you just kind of gets gets pushed back there. And, and the Bible said, also says too, as we draw nigh to God, He draws nigh to us. And so, as we draw closer to Him in everything, He takes care of all that other stuff, everything. And you know, and um, just to, to share something a little personal. Um, when when Darren and I first started coming to this church, uh, Darren was Dar Darren was my husband, by the way, for those of you that don't know. But Darren wasn't quite where he he should have been. Well, neither was I. But but anyway, but um, you know, I I got on track a little bit faster than he did. It took him a little bit longer to kind of to, you know, and it was hard. I mean, it it kind of put a strain on our marriage where I you know I. I was focused on on God and on, on things, and He wasn't quite quite there yet. He was coming, but He wasn't quite there. And I remember Pastor Brian just telling me, you know, I had to submit to Him. But but as I did, and as I kept focused on God, all that other stuff would fall into place, and it did. You know, and and, and I just kept my heart right. I loved Him. I prayed for Him. Didn't fight with Him. You know, but I. I fought in the spiritual realm, and he wouldn't be where he is today if we had, you know, I hadn't done that. And um, you know, so so it's, you know, you keep your eyes focused on God, and and you what's important to Him, you keep that important to you. He takes care of all that other stuff. And then we're seeing too as we have done this, His family starting to come and turn around. And, and that was something that seemed so impossible. And, um, you know, we know that his dad's in heaven, his mom's coming around, and even his sister and things like that. And it's just, it works. I, I'm not preaching theory. It, it works. You just keep your mind focused on him, <clears throat> put your heart in with his, and he takes care of all that other stuff. Um, and then also... I'm kind of bebopping around here, I'm sorry, but as we become unified in the church and we all get that one mind, one accord, then we lock arms with the pastor and we, we have his heart and we have uh, the vision of the house and, and it all just flows as one, you know, and, it, and it's just, and then when, when, a, when a church and a pastor and, all, and everybody in it has God's heart, it's just amazing what can take place and you, you can take ground things start to change around you, you know. And, and, and this neighborhood's a perfect example. You know, when we first got here, it was very rough when we got here. But we were in unity, and we prayed, and we still pray. We still fight against the principalities and the powers. We walk around the church before every service and pray and, and take authority. And, and we've just noticed just a lot of things, you know, have, have started changing. Because we were in unity, we had God's heart. We saw what God saw. We saw what what our purpose was here and what God wanted us to do. And and things have have changed for the good. So So um, 
So that's pretty much all that I had. Um, and so, you know, um, I want to open up the altar to you. And, and, and if you, you know, you want to work, work on your love walk, or if you want prayer for your love walk, or, or prayer for anything, go ahead and come on up and, and I'll, I'll pray with you.